Ron. Can you hear me? Yay, you're here. I can see you and I can hear you. I guess you're making progress, guy. Who, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> okay. Good. You can hear me then. I can. That's great. Good. I'm moving ahead now. <laughs> I'm right. You're coming up in the world. <laughs> This modern technology, I'll tell you, keeps us on our toes, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It does. I just wanted to make sure that I'm ahead and, and stuff right now. You know, I know it's, I'm a little early, but I want to make sure I'm on. And Yeah, I like that, too. I like to make sure everything's in order yeah. and I calm down and enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Oh, hi, baby. What's his name? Festus. Huh? Hi, Festus. Yeah. Festus. Who's the lady she's talking to? <laughs> huh? They're so precious. They're like members of the family. Oh, they. Yes, they are. No. Go lay down. No. Hi, Larry. Hello, how are you? Excellent, thank you. And I see, I see Ron there. Yeah. Yep. You can hear me tonight? <laughs> I can hear you tonight, yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, I saw you pop in a couple times at the last meeting. It was just like odd, odd pop-ups, which was kind of interesting. Yeah. Take it, we're the first three, huh? Looks that way. Yeah. Let's just hope there's a quorum. <laughs> Hi, Ron. How you doing, Tom? Very good, thank you. Hello, Patty. Hi, Tom. Didn't we have fun? I had a ball with that. <laughs> I could hear you laughing all the way over here. <laughs> That's good. I like stuff like that. That's <laughs> So do I. That was fun. You'll look very tan. I don't know why the color is so dark on mine. I don't see any way to turn it down uh, to, to make it more normal. Everybody else looks fine. I look like I'm sunburned. <laughs> you probably are. 
What kind of light do you have there, Patty? Oh, maybe maybe that could be it. I've just got a fan up in the ceiling, but they look, uh, they're just white, white, white looking lights. Oh, okay. Because sometimes that, that makes a difference as far as the, the color temperature of your light bulbs. Okay, yeah, that might make sense. You look good. <laughs> good evening, Larry. Evening, how are you? Very good, thank you. You survived your first meeting, huh? Yes, and I came back for another one. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose that's a good sign, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's... Uh... I don't. Okay. You talking to me? I think oh. I'm muted. Hey. Ron, do I hear you? It's me. All right. It's live. Hey. Finally got myself together. <laughs> well, you've always been together. You just didn't want to share. <laughs> evening, Don. Good evening. How are you? Very well. How about yourself? Good, thank you. Well, so gentlemen, the good news is we already have a quorum. Already, huh? Yeah. So, Patty, you're sure turning those minutes out fast. I did. I got right on them, boy. I made a fresh pot of coffee and <laughs> I got them going. Well, thank you. And, Tommy, thank you for all the proofreading you were doing. She, uh, she turned those things around fast. Well, sometimes, and sometimes if I got a lot of things going or if Larry's not well, I put it off too long. It's better to do them right away. It's fresh in my mind. Yeah, that's that's always the truth on minutes. Boy, you wait too long and you say, what was all that about? <laughs> and I do them for several different places, too, so they can get confusing. <laughs> but next, <laughs> I don't have one meeting all next week. That's great. That's been a long time since I've done that. <laughs> That will be nice, Patty. Well, I thought I thought Dawn, you were going to call a special meeting next week. <laughs> <laughs> I won't have too many attendees if I do. <laughs> then you won't have Patty either. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, and Scott, don't they have the town meeting next next week? Actually, town meetings. You're right. It's a drive-in town meeting. Yeah, next Wednesday. Yep. Oh, Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. You, you had to remind or, me. So Tommy, um, <laughs> since he brought that up and we haven't started quite yet, um, we're leaving Wednesday morning. We're out of state in New Hampshire. So um, I'll, I'll chime in, Don. Um, there, this is you know such an awkward town meeting that planning staff will do the intro on these things. 
to avoid uh, too many people out at once. Okay. And now that's planning perfect. staff will also answer any questions. So that's perfect because I, yep. I I meant to mention that yesterday and I forgot. It's it's kind of special because it was a show that was going to be at Eastern States in Massachusetts, but some of the requirements got rolled back, which meant that the show couldn't go there. So they ended up back in Deerfield, New Hampshire, and we can venture into Deerfield and come back without quarantining. So. Oh. So any objection if we start one minute early? All right, we got a thumbs up from Patty. Let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Patty, can you take roll call? I can, Don Spann. Present. Ronald Bisson. Present. Larry Brand. Present. Scott Libby. Present. Joshua Spooner. Tom Thompson. Present. Bruce Benoit. All right, I haven't heard from either one of them in regards to tonight's meeting. So Mr. Um, Spooner and Mr. Benno are not present. Okay. Well, good news is we have a quorum. Uh, and Rod, if I understand right, we did have minutes from the workshop, uh, but we're, we're not approving those minutes. Is that correct? Correct, but you, you had, oh, you did approve the minutes from the last meeting before your workshop on Tuesday. Right. Yeah, so you don't have minutes to approve right now. Okay, all right. But again, for the record, uh, Patty has put together minutes from the workshop and those minutes are, will be posted if they're not posted already. Is that correct? They will be posted. They are not posted quite yet. Okay, good. All right. So unless there's anything from the board, why don't we move right into the, um, agenda item and we have basically public hearings on um, site plan and conditional use for Mike Saucier um, to build a tractor supply building at 403 Lewiston Road tax map R05 lot 60 and 61. So who's going to speak to that to start? Don I will uh, I'll do a little bit of an introduction if that's okay. Sure go ahead. Um, yeah, before us tonight is a site plan and a conditional use permit applications for your review. The last time you reviewed this project was a sketch plan application. I think it was our first Zoom meeting um, since the coronavirus has been in place. So that was back in April. Um, since that time, the applicant uh, has submitted a formal application. Staff has now reviewed uh, two iterations of that uh, plan set. We have some outstanding technical comments, but uh, our peer reviewer and, our, and, and we as staff are comfortable that the project meets the uh, review standards of the site plan zoning ordinances uh, and the conditional use standards. Uh, my memo that came out to you yesterday provides some recommended conditions should you choose to approve the project. Um, we have not held a public hearing or heard any sort of public comment on this project in, in, uh, yet. So that's something okay. that you should do tonight. Happy okay. to answer any questions. Jim Hebert is the designer of the project and uh, can guide us through uh, the, the revisions that have been made since uh, the last submission. Okay, Andrew, thank you. So, um, yeah, we will open it up to the public. Um, the other thing is there's, it calls for three waivers. Does, I don't want to get ahead of the game, but do we want to talk about those? I'd advise if, if Jim wants to, to outline the justifications for those requests, and then uh, we can just work from there. Okay, all right, then I, I guess, Jim. One, one, question, you... one question, Don. Go ahead. Uh, when you first mentioned this, you said tractor supply, which is not the same thing as what I think is being proposed. Well, it's, it's called, I read it right off the agenda, but I've also seen it called Manchester tractor. So maybe someone can help us. Yeah, I mean, there's a tractor supply over Cook's Corner in Brunswick. No, understand. So I guess what should we call it? Top some tractor, isn't it? Top some tractor, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> if that's yeah, good, folks, it, it is top some tractor. That's correct. Right. Andrew, do you want to speak to that? Uh, just that it's the non-chain business. Mike Saucier uh, operates Manchester Tractor, and uh, he's here. Rick can represent his operation. 
Um, but this is not the the chain business that's located over at Cook's Corner. Yeah. I, I believe uh, I believe our our secretary took some liberties with the uh, the titling of the agenda. That's fine. So Patty, correct what I said, and thank you, Larry. Um, so Jim, do you want to kind of take us through this? Are you you're still muted, Jim? Okay, I think. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Planning Board, for holding this uh, special meeting uh, tonight. Uh, Mike is anxious to get started on this project, and, uh, and this will certainly help him if everything goes well. And as stated, we've submitted the application and the supporting materials. That was submitted on June 12th. Uh, we also submitted a conditional use application. Uh, to address the fact that uh, this is a retail sales in the uh, residential commercial use zoning district, which requires, as I understand it, requires a conditional use application. So that was part of the uh, application packages. Uh, the facility is located at 403 Lewiston Road on a property of about 15 acres. Uh, we expect the total disturbed area to be around 2.3 acres. Uh, and uh, the resulting, uh, what will result out of all that is an increase of impervious area of about less than an acre of uh, impervious area increase. Uh, the site plan and the architectural drawings have been submitted to the state fire marshal. They're presently under review. Uh, and the DP, we've also submitted to the DP because this is a watershed adjacent to the uh, freshwater wetlands that are part of the property. Uh, and so we submitted a uh, permit by rule to the DP and it's presently under review under their 14 day clock. Uh, we have addressed as a uh, Andrew stated, we've addressed most of the comments. We've received recent comments from uh, Tom and that was at the beginning of the week and uh, I've gone through them. There's nothing there that is insurmountable uh, or even significant, uh, but we will address those and all of these comments will be satisfactorily resolved by the end of next week. Uh, so we have requested three waivers. Uh, they were part of the, they are part of the package and I will gladly go over those. And with the exception of the three waivers, uh, Black Diamond uh, feels that uh, we meet the ordinance requirements and standards as well as the uh, conditional use. And so, with that, I'm here so to answer the questions. Just a here quick, quick question. Um, if I read in some of the newer documentation, there, this is not, and I think someone mentioned retail, this, this is not auto sales. There are no auto sales intended here? That is correct. This, this will be a, a dealership for tractors and uh, outdoor power equipment. Okay. All right. And, and yeah, if you wouldn't mind briefly just talk through the waivers. Okay. Uh, all three waivers are associated with the uh, landscape uh, section 10 of chapter 175 of your ordinances. And uh, we are requesting a waiver on the parking lot trees and landscape islands. Uh, request, recommend, uh, we recommend four islands with, uh, with street trees be located adjacent on the east side and west side to the parking areas uh, versus integrated with the parking. And uh, that's to minimize the, uh, uh, the traffic on in the parking area by delivery, delivery vehicles as well as the tractors themselves and also to facilitate snow removal. That was one of the waivers. The second is uh, we're requesting a waiver from canopy trees within the parking area for the same reasons. And we recommend canopy trees to be located in the grass buffer uh, on the east and west side as well. 
and uh, the grass buffer is basically a storm water buffering uh, for the for the water uh, storm water coming from the watershed uh, prior to uh, the uh, adjacent wetlands. And the last request for waiver uh, has to do with planting requirements uh, on the uh, rear and side lot lines. And because these are wetland areas, there's a small section that is upland, and we are proposing uh, uh, buffers in those areas. But for the rest of them, the, the rest of the uh, lot lines are wetland areas, and uh, they've already got growth. It's well adapted to the wetland conditions, and uh, it would require, I would imagine, some DEP approval to go in there and start disturbing that. Uh, natural growth in the wetlands. So that's the third waiver. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And if I understood correctly, you have no issues with any of the technical comments as far as being a condition of approval. That is correct. Okay. All right. Um, anything else before I'll, I'll see if the board has any questions? No, I'm fine. Okay. Ronnie, anything? Not right now. I want to okay. wait to see what we, we got from. Thank you. Larry? Uh, yeah, my, my understanding is this is the lot that is currently uh, or was recently being used for storage for uh, railroad tie type things for the, I think, for CMP. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, and where this is going to be located uh, on the west side of, of that lot is a is already tree growth. Is that tree growth staying, or is this cutting into that tree growth? Well, the development is strictly in the upland areas, and right now they're pretty barren because they were a logging storage area as well as for these railroad ties. Okay, yeah, because it was fairly well clear cut in there. Yep. And in the storage area. Okay, so there's not really going to be any further uh, cutting into that tree growth that's on the the northwest side or west as you go out 196. I take it. No, no, there won't be. Okay. If, if uh, yeah. folks need, um, this is Rod. If folks need a history on the uh, site, it was a. Uh, a log yard by the previous owner that laid down that area uh, had been dealing with codes and planning was asked to come in for a grading plan and um, during that time he sold to these folks and that's why we're here tonight. Um, instead of a grading plan we have a full site plan in front of us so that's the history of the clearing on that lot. Thanks Rod. Anything <coughs> else Larry? Uh, and then the the rest of the lot is just going to be left as is and allowed to regrow back? Is that what the plan is? I don't I see uh, a big area in toward the back. Yeah, we'll be working the upland areas. The rest of the lot, the two lots, the rest of the, the site is our wetland areas and they won't be disturbed. Okay, yeah. If, if it's know, helpful, I can share a, an image of the site plan to indicate where the lawn area is and what will be left to grow up. Would that be helpful? Is that, is that the one that's actually yeah. on, on the application, the, the site plan? He has yes. on the most recent thing he posted. Yes, I, I'm looking at that right now. Yep. Okay, um, yep. no, so the, okay you're, you're good, okay. I'm, I'm good, if it's, unless it's something you want to throw in. No, actually I learned something because I was going to ask about the west end of it and it, it makes sense uh, with the wet areas. Um, be kind of difficult to throw more trees in there. So, um, yeah. I just didn't want any more cut down as far as, yeah. you know, they... no, I agree. <laughs> um, thank you, Larry. Uh, Tommy. Thank you. I've, I've got several questions. Uh, some of them just, well, just for information. The correct address is 403. Is that correct? That's the address that we were given. Okay, because uh, by the town, and in, in several places in all the documents, there are three addresses. 
the 353 and the 383. Yeah, that was before we were given that address, and I have no idea how those two different addresses came about. Okay. Um, as the applicant, or have you, um, have you seen the letter from Mr. McDonald? Yes, uh, we were, we were uh, copied uh, by email on that. Okay. If, if he is the neighbor, I forget the name, but if he's the neighbor. He is. Jim, okay. Adjacent to the east side. That's one of the reasons we put up the buffer or we're proposing the buffer area as we have in the upland areas adjacent to his property. Okay. But nobody's contacted him. I sent an email to him alerting him of this meeting earlier in the week. Okay. Thank you. Um, is the fire chief? Providing a letter in the, in the documents, it says that uh, Black Diamond is informed by the fire chief that he's going to be sending a letter about this project. Uh, <clears throat> Tom, we haven't received a letter, but we went through staff review with the fire chief. Um, typically, that he has no issues those comments will come up if the fire chief actually has issues and you guys would be discussing them. Okay. And then one final question is, is access for the tractor trailers. It looks a little tight in there. Have you guys thought about maybe moving some of that parking behind the building, like employee parking. I think we may have lost Jim. I think we did, because I, I don't and know. I think we may be returning. There we go. So Tommy, repeat your question for Jim. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm kind of concerned about tractor trailer situation in there. Last thing we want to see is a tractor trailer backing off 196. And uh, so it seems like it's awful tight in there. And my question was, is there any thought to moving some of those parking spaces out behind the building, like for employees? Give you know, tractor trailers a little bit more room. Those guys are good drivers, but I'm sure they would appreciate a lot of room. So they, we've done a tracking study on the uh, delivery tractor. I think if people envision a pretty large tractor trailer and this isn't such a, a large unit and uh, the property as designed would allow without uh, any difficulty access to the delivery points on that, on that, at that property, at that site. It also allows emergency uh, vehicles like fire trucks, so. How did you did you see Tom Saucier's note about that in his letter? Yes, and we are addressing that. Uh, I'm not sure I understand where he thinks the restrictions are because there was 20 foot uh, clearance there, and that we were told that's what the emergency vehicles need. Okay, but that will be reviewed uh, next week and discussed with Tom and in, in the uh, the office. At, in and again, as a office. condition, you would take care of any issues there with the technical review. That is correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, just a couple of clarifications. And I, th these are also on Tom's list. So they're, you know, they're gonna be something that's a condition anyway, but um, just wanted to get some clarification on the, the easement. I, I, is, is that going to continue to be there? I mean, it's come up, it came up earlier as far as, you know, the inability to have the two, the two uh, cuts. And now it sounds like maybe the easement doesn't exist anymore or, or what? Just trying to get clarification on that. Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, I have all the answers on that, but that will be addressed next week. But Mike has indicated that uh, because it's in the wetlands, uh, that particular <clears throat> uh, easement will not be in use, will not be allowed to be used. But uh, we're not sure uh, exactly how 
the easement as it's presently presented on that site plan, how it got to be as it is, because we've looked at the surveys and we've looked at uh, other information and the easement already uh, just showed up, it seemed, adjacent, uh, tying into one, uh, 196. So that needs to be looked at and we, and we will address that next week. Okay. Um, and you, and Jim, and earlier on you mentioned uh, about the stormwater uh, management, um, and you were saying that it's, I think you said about two, two and a half acres of impervious surf surface, but that only less than one, or disturbed surface, but only less than one of new impervious surface? That's correct. So, so I'm just trying to understand that. I mean, it looks like more than an acre that's going to be impervious, correct? With nope. the with the building and the and nope. the tar. It's just it's just under an acre. It is okay. Of the impervious areas, but we in the disturbed areas, which is what are, what are we disturbing? It was all disturbed. We will before, be yeah. disturbing most of the upland, which is about two point three acres, but okay. most of that will be returned to a grass impervious exactly. area. Okay. All right, and uh, yeah, the last thing was just a comment about the, the landscaping and the buffering. It was good to see um, the additional landscaping, uh, especially down on the, the eastern end. Thanks for, for adding that in there. Right. That was done because of the, the neighbor basically said, recommended that we do something to buffer that area. Good, thank you. So any other questions from the board? If not, I'll open it up for the public hearing for any comments. All right, seeing none, let's go ahead oh, and open up. Oh. I, if if you're interested in speaking, please raise your hand. Allow you to talk. We have Janet Fogg. Yes. Hi. Hi, uh, Janet. Hi, Janet Fogg, 20 Coville Road. Um, I was wondering what was gonna be going into this site. So when I found out, I started to look and just see what, see what was going in. I was glad that it was not the tractor store, which it, when I first glanced at it, I thought that's what was happening. <laughs> um, so this seems like a pretty appropriate business to, to go in this spot and seems to be consistent with the you know, with a comprehensive plan and all. I, I'm glad to hear about the buffering for the immediate immediate neighbors. Um, so I just, that's all I, all I want to say. All right, thank you very much, Janet. Yep. Andrew, anybody else? No. All right, so I'll just ask if there's any other public comment, please. All right, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. So I'll come back to the board. Do you have any more questions? If I if I made may Don or or you go to check with Ron first. No, go ahead, Larry. Okay. Uh so my question is is this very similar to the setup uh that is present in Manchester? Yes, it is, with the exception that uh uh, it won't include uh, used vehicles. Okay. Uh, and of course, the one in Manchester is located on Route 9202. Uh, and do you have to, do they have to back in tractor trailers there to deliver the tractors, et cetera? Or are they able to pull that in? That would be Mike. I think if Mike has. Uh audio can you respond to that mike uh yeah we have no problem they drive right in and we have a turnaround they have no problem um in even in this location which is actually a little bit smaller than the location that's going to be present in uh top so yeah i'm gonna say look, this this one looks this oh i'm sorry this one looks a little bit bigger than uh, as far as how it's set up than manchester does correct yeah yeah okay but the, uh, the display type idea is gonna be the same as far as you're gonna have some tractors out front to, so people know that this is, we're selling tractors. I, I yeah, think. correct, yeah, yeah. Um, we have, uh, yeah, 
Uh, it will be kind of very similar, probably not quite as close because we don't have to be as close to the road. So, um, yeah. but we'll be very, very similar. Okay. Very good. Thank yeah. you. Yep, you're welcome. Tommy, Tommy, you had your hand up, I believe. Yeah, just one question. This was probably for Rod or Andrew. Um, they're indicating that there's, there's going to be no auto sales or no used car sales. With, if in the future they decide they want to do that, but it, what, what's the procedure? They would need to obtain another conditional use permit for that type of use at that location. Thank you. Uh, that's kind of why I asked to make sure it was on the record, Tommy. Okay, any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Well, do we want to uh, do the motions on the... Uh, you want to do the waivers? waivers? Yeah. Waivers. Want to, you want to do the waivers first and then do the other motions? Yep. Now, I'll just ask Ward, I can lump these all into one motion or would you prefer a separate motion for each waiver? I'd say lump them together. I know that's the way Bruce likes to do it, but um, does anybody object in the board? No objection. No, they will lump them together, be all right. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I move that we grant the applicant's request for three waivers from 175-10B, four through seven, and 175-10E, C, to minimize interference with trailer truck deliveries and snow plowing, as well as to protect wetlands, and assist with the growth of grass, stormwater runoff areas. Second. The only, only question is, do, do we want to add in their, you know, the fact that they're putting the islands to the east and west as shown in the canopy trees? They were granting the waiver, but part of granting that waiver is that they they proposed to, to do this in another location. Do we, do we need to state that or? I'm not sure. I'm just bringing it up. <coughs> I, I, think I, I think I'm asking Rod or Andrew. No, no, Rod or. Yes, I think it would be. It's a. It, it'd be great to reference the fact that the applicant's shifting those trees over. Yeah. Certainly, they're meeting the intent of kind of the reason for those types of plantings. Yeah. Right. Good. So, uh, ready, Patty? Ready, Freddy. Okay. <laughs> Four islands, the street trees, be located adjacent to east and west paved areas. Canopy trees be located in a grass buffer area to the east of the facility. And the rear and side lot line areas or wetland areas and not recommended for disturbance. Okay, so do we have a second? I'll second that. All right, do we have any discussion on the waiver motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Is there any opposition? Seeing none, it's unanimous. Thank you, Tommy. Okay, ready for the next one? Please. Don, if I could interrupt real quickly. Yeah. Um, thinking about the conditions and the access easement, um, 
if you wanted to, you could add an additional condition that would just state that any use of the easement as it's shown on the site plan today would require planning board approval. That might just provide a safety to make sure that, um, you know, curb cut doesn't go in where it shouldn't, or, you know, there is no environmental impact. Um, that's completely up to you. Uh, it just might be a strategy if that was an anxiety of, of the boards. Okay, Jim, do you see any issue with that? No, I don't. Okay, then please add that, Tommy. And thank you, Andrew. That's a good idea. Okay, now outside of that one, I'll throw this back maybe at Scott. Were there others, additional conditions that you wanted added in there? Do we do, for um, example, do we, they mentioned that they're looking, they're waiting for a review by DEP, waiting for a review by the state marshal, state fire marshal. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think those would be encompassed with the, you know, number 10 with, you know, the technical review comments. Um, okay. I think the, the easement would also be there except for potential use later. So I think it was good to add that. Um, so we have to do the conditional use findings first, right? Or are, we, are you lumping the two together? Oh, no, I'll do the conditional. I'll do the conditional first and then we'll come back to the site. Okay. Are we ready, Don? Yes, please. Okay. I move that the conditional use permit application, the Topsom Tractor, 403 Lewiston Road, tax map R05, lots 60 and 61, is in compliance with standards in 225-67 as set forth in the findings of fact on page three in the memo to the planning board from Andrew D.C. dated July 1, 2020. Do we have a second? Second. I'll second it. Okay, do we have any discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor say, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, it's unanimous. Thank you, Tommy. So let's go on to the last one. Uh, I move site plan permit application, Topsom Tractor, 403 Lewiston Road, X map. R05, lots 60 and 61, in <laughs> compliance with 175 and 225, based on information updated in a revised site plan from Black Diamond Consultants Incorporated, dated July 16, 2020, reflecting the applicant's responses to comments from staff and our peer reviewer the standard conditions of approval on page four of the memo from Andrew DC to the planning board dated July 1, 2020, paying particular attention to condition number 10, that the applicant satisfies all outstanding technical comments from the peer review engineer. During this meeting, one more condition has been added to the list. This will be number 11. Any use of the easement after today, for future use needs to be approved by the planning board. Okay, do we have a second? Second. I'll second it. All right. Scott, whatever. Yeah, no, I think Scott got in there first, Ron. Yeah. Uh, okay. Give me a turn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so since you're already there, any comments on uh, or discussion on this before we vote? All right. 
Seeing none, hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. So again, that passes unanimously. Um, all right, thank you. So if I, if I can jump in real quick, uh, Jim and Mike, um, follow up with the planning office. We'll take care of that uh, outstanding condition and get your plan, your revised plans signed as soon as possible so you can get your building permits and get going on your project. Thank, thank you so much. much. Yeah, well, we're, we'll be working we're talking, next week. While we're talking about that, uh, I'm in town Monday and Tuesday. So if you can get them to me Tuesday, I can get them signed. Otherwise, I'm out of town for a few days. Unless Rod, can Tom sign for me as, as vice? Tom, Tom, yes, Tom can sign too. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, any any other business, gentlemen? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. We have a second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. And thank you, Thank you, Rod. Great.